The production of useful chemicals involves several stages. The preparation of feedstocks, which involves getting the ingredients ready. Synthesis, where you actually undertake the chemical reaction. Separation of products, to get rid of any unnecessary waste products produced in the reaction. Handling of byproducts and waste, which need to be dealt with safely. The monitoring of purity, to check the final outcome of the product. The sustainability of a product links into seven key areas which build on the earlier stages of production. It is firstly important whether the raw materials or feedstocks that are needed are renewable, as this will determine their availability in the future. As well as the renewability of the feedstock, it is also important to consider the amount of energy that is required by the process, and this is where catalysts can be used to lower the activation energy. Bear in mind that some processes release energy which can be captured. You also need to consider the social and economic benefits that could come from the production of the chemical. Not just in terms of the obvious advantages, such as the development of new medicines, but the jobs and infrastructure associated with other chemicals. This next set focuses on the safety side. You need to consider whether there's a lot of waste and how it can be disposed of. Can it be recycled and reused in the process? Used for something else? Or is it potentially hazardous to dispose of? The health and safety requirements also need to stretch to the workers in the plants and the overall effect this process could have on the environment, from the start and the extraction of feedstocks to dispose of the waste products at the end. Finally, a really important way to chemically analyse and compare the sustainability of products is by working out the atom economy. This is basically a measure of the material that you start with and how much of them become the products that you want to make. The higher the percentage of material that you convert, the more you make and the less waste you produce. To work it out, you can use this equation. So let's have a look at an example. Here we are reacting steam with carbon to produce hydrogen. We first need to work out the molecular masses of the products and reactants using a periodic table. Then we put the numbers into our equation. So on the top, we need the mass of the desired product, which in this case is hydrogen, and is four. And on the bottom, we need the total mass of reactants. So that means both the carbon and the steam. So adding 36 to 12, we get 48. Working this out, we can see the atom economy is around about 8.3%. This is low, and this shows that this is not the most sustainable way of producing hydrogen. A number closer to 100% shows a more sustainable process, as you're converting more of the reactants to useful products, and therefore producing less waste.